three, two, one. Hey everyone, Phil from 3DP UK Tech Channel. Today I thought I'd bring a really quick video on the Creality K1. So I see a lot of videos online about the maintenance of this. So on here you will see that you've got three lead screws. So you've got two at the front and one at the back. And also a lot of, a lot of the time you build up quite a lot of mess at the bottom of the actual printer. So what we want to do is like clear anything that we've got any debris that could potentially cause any issues there, but also, um, take off the old lubrication off the lead screws, uh, like I say, two at the front and one on the back and clear some of that off. Um, and then we'll reapply some more lubrication just to make sure that it's always lubricated. You want to do this at least every three months, but I would also say that maybe do it a lot more frequently if you're using it frequently as well. But if you're an infrequent user like me, sometimes probably every three months would probably be sufficient, but it's really up to you. Um, and obviously the more you clean it, the likelihood of any damage is going to be reduced. So, the other thing I like to do is give the bed a good clean with some alcohol and then um, I always use 3D lac. So with the 3D lac, I just, once I've cleaned it, cause obviously I want it still have the adhesion there as well. So I just give it a little spray that helps a lot. The other thing you want to do is like me, I've um, added some extra things on there that I've printed and that just allows some better airflow, especially for PLA and you've got the door shut. Um, the airflow on there is not great. Uh, so having this, it just allows that. Um, the other thing during the maintenance, you want to just check that everything is moving freely. So what you want to do is turn off the machine to do that so that there's the motors are disengaged and also take off the power socket from the side because you don't want to put any sort of stress on that. Um, and we're going to clean off these, the, um, the actual rails as well. Um, now these aren't uh, carbon rails, they're actually steel. So we can apply a very small amount of grease on that, which is something that Creality have suggested. So we're going to stick to what they say. Um, but like I say, if I just run my hands across that, I have got like some, a black residue from the movement. So what we also want to do is just check any of the cabling. So nothing is wearing out. We'll check all the pulleys as well, make sure that they're still okay. And then we'll just move it about and check that the fans are, have not got any sort of debris in as well. So realistically, the only maintenance that you want to do to this on a sort of a monthly to three monthly is to always check prior to printing that you've got nothing in the bottom because obviously the bed always lowers anything that's in there is going to get destroyed but also could potentially damage the motors and you don't want to do that um, and we'll just do literally a quick run over the whole machine make sure that we're happy with how it looks and we can put it back into schedule back to you so um, I think the fact that these printers are quite expensive especially the sort of premium brands, so the Creality K1 and the K1 Max and the K1C and even the newer models that are due to come out in the market, which I'll leave a link in the description as to the multicolor, which is interesting use to see from Creality. I think Creality are really starting to saturate the market with all new um, products, which is good to see. Um, but like I say, back to the K1, we just want to double check that everything is running as intended. And like I say, the amount of money that we spend on these products, it, it's a good idea to always check. So without sort of taking up too much of your time, thanks for watching this video. Don't forget to like and subscribe and over to the maintenance part of the video. Okay, so we're over at the K1 printer now. Um, what we're gonna need to do is head into the screen and lower the Z height. So I'm gonna do that. We want it to go right down to the bottom. So we'll, go past that part and then um, we'll then start cleaning off the actual rods itself. Okay, so we've brought it down to its lowest point. So right now um, it's right at the low part. And what we want to do is with like just some normal cloth. So I've got like a non-shedding cloth. So um, 
I wouldn't advise using just paper towels. I mean, a lot of people do use that. And the problem is with that, you start getting, what you're trying to do is remove the debris from the lead screw. So the idea is to actually take, take it off. So I've got this, I've sprayed it with a bit of alcohol. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna run this cloth down the actual lead screw itself. And we wanna take off all the old grease. And in that grease is likely to be sort of, you know, debris, bits of plastic, potentially, even um, shards of um, metal that could have just over time worn away. And what you'll see is you've got like on the cloth, just this black residue is just worn away um, lubrication. So I would suggest wiping the whole of the lead screw. We will need to do the lower part because obviously it goes all the way to the bottom. Um, there are a number of different ways to do this. So there is no wrong or right way. You just want to try and get as much off as possible. I have seen people using toothbrushes. That's, that's actually a very good way of doing it. Um, but I found just literally running your cloth along the grooves of that. And you want to do that with all three. So you've got one here, the rear seems to have a lot more debris on it than the, the actual front ones. And you've got one on the right hand side here. So there's three all together. So we're gonna do that first and then we'll go on to the next step. PCB Way is a PC board manufacturer. Not only do they do PC boards, they do PCB assemblies, rigid flex, they even do CNC and 3D printing. Their website is easy to use, very intuitive, and you have lots of different competitions. It's in each section, it takes you into that screen and you can actually choose sizes and different things like that. So their whole website is really easy to use. It's also um, delivery worldwide and their customer care is next to none. I am on this website because they hold little competitions where you can win lots of prizes. So thank you to PCB Way for today's video sponsor. So I could, as you can see, those three lead screws had quite a bit of um, debris on it and old grease that had, you know, gone bad. Um, I do do this quite frequently. So I've had this K1 for just a little over eight months now. So I've done this twice. This is be the third time. So it goes to show you, I mean, there's no sort of, it's always good to do a bit of an inspection as well, just to see what sort of, um, what sort of uh, issues have you found on it. So is there any large chunks of metal on there that you need to investigate, but it doesn't, it just, just seems like burnt out grease. As you can see, the lead screws do look a little cleaner. And with this non-shedding cloth, um, you can pick these up from most hardware stores. Um, even with a good tug, they don't seem to come away, which is good, which means you're not leaving any debris on that. So what we want to do is raise it. So just by pressing the Z height, uh, we're going to go up. You want to change it to 30 mil because obviously that's going to speed up this process. And we don't need to go too far, but just enough for me to be able to put my hand underneath and uh, clear the path to do the lower part of the lead screw. So we're going to quickly do that. Just want to wipe it at the back and say so most of it has been done and just check around the motor make sure there's no grease build up on the motor which could potentially cause other issues and then just double check the top just as you've moved it because obviously the lead screw does move so you're probably likely to get some other bits there and then do the back now you are going to likely to touch the bed with this cloth so um, or dislodge any grease. So what I would always suggest is to do the rods first and leave the bed right till last. So now we're going to apply some super loop. So this is just normal um, grease. So what I always suggest we do is take it up as far as you can. Um, and as you get to sort of about an inch from the top, you're going to want to um, apply a little bit of grease to the top part. So we're gonna do that now. You literally just have to square a little bit on there. Now this is only gonna go a little way to the top, so we don't need to put too much on this one. Just a bead of it on each side. 
like so. And then we're gonna use the actual printer to apply it. So as you can see, it's now pushing it through. And we're gonna go out to the top and stop about there. And we can just, we can just apply a little bit of the rest with our fingers, there's no issues with that. Um, and I'll do the top part of the back a little bit later on in the video. And now what we wanna do now, it's at its top part, um, is we wanna do the same for the bottom part. Now this is gonna be slightly more, but what I suggest, rather than putting a, a, a big clump at the top and hoping it will go all the way to the bottom, you're gonna just get too much of a build up, is just apply small amounts all the way down and literally it only has to be a small amount. The same with the back. And like so. And on the other side, as you can see. Now what that will do is just allow the, the lubrication to spread evenly across all three lead screws. So let's move that down now. This is the longest part of it to be fair. Um, because you are reliant on the lead screws to apply the lubrication. And what you don't want to do is have these lead screws dry or with any debris on them. Because the whole point of these is you want them to run smoothly because this is effectively the most important part of this. You know, if these aren't running smoothly, you're going to get um, misprints, you'll probably get ringing and all sorts of other issues potentially. And we want to go right to the bottom, as you can see. And then as we get to the bottom, we are pretty much done. So we're going to stop it there. So that is um, the three lead screws lubricate, uh, cleaned and lubricated. Now there are various ways of doing that. So there is no wrong way or right way. The most important thing is to do the best to clear it. Once you've done it, just check you haven't got too much of a build up around the actual lead screw points because um, you don't want it sort of splodging out onto the bed. Um, so that's that. So we're going to go on to just cleaning the actual, um, the other parts up here and just trouble checking all of these um, cables and just making sure that we are good to go. Okay, so th for this part, we want to turn off the power really and make sure um, we don't have anything that could potentially hinder the actual movement of this. So now we've cut the power, we can actually move this more freely, as you can see. And what we're wanting to clean is these bars here. Now with a fresh cloth, don't reuse the one that you've cleaned um, the lead screw with. Spray the actual um, cloth again, once again, non-shedding. And what we wanna do is just go along this bar like so it's slightly more e awkward with this cable in the way, but just make sure you do all the way up to the end underneath. And then you want to slide this over like so and do the other side. You'll be surprised how much build up you actually get from this because obviously, it, yeah, with the build up of um, the actual cloths, you can see how much I've got on there. So it's a considerable amount. Now, what we're going to also do is just check the pulleys as well in the corners, just make sure that they're all still intact and you haven't got any sort of damages to those. Um, and over here, you've got a couple of pulleys in here, just double check them. Now I've cleaned all the rods, but I'm gonna do what a lot of people say not to do, which is apply some grease. And I'm just gonna put a small amount on here and a small amount on here. And then at the bottom part, just a couple of bits there. And then one along here, and the reason why I'm going to do that is because it's actually specified by Creality to do so. You know, in the end of the day, they have a maintenance program and I'm going to stick to it. Um, it's up to you how you maintain your printer, but ultimately that's what they're suggesting. It is a graphite part inside. So we're going to move it around just to apply that. But to be fair, once we start printing, move it forward, this will apply itself anyway. This for me just, I've actually noticed it. If I've cleaned it and left it, it creates like a judder. And I, after a while, the graphite sort of creates a lubrication and it starts clearing off and it doesn't judder. But the initial print, straight after cleaning it, you do get a judder because it's dry. 
So just applying a very small amount of grease kind of helps it along and it also keeps it lubricated. So um, the other thing you want to do is just check that the fan doesn't have anything inside of it that could potentially cause damage. Um, like I say, this is the K1, not the K1C. So it's just a fan. It doesn't have any carbon filters. So we don't need to check the filters on this one. And the other thing you want to do is inside is just check that the cables are all intact because they are kind of in this lead screw sort of area. Um, and the last thing you want to do is just overall check that none of the outside exterior is damaged and the cables are all there as intended. So what we're going to do now is we're going to clean the bed and then that pretty much wraps up the maintenance. It's a very basic maintenance. There's probably a lot more that you can do with it, but these are the key ones to get you printing again. So let's uh, go over to the part of cleaning the bed. Okay, so I'm going to take the flexible bill plate off. Now, um, this one didn't actually come with this, so it's a completely different bill plate to what most of you would have if you bought it straight from the, um, the shop. So I'm just going to apply a bit of alcohol using non-shedding cloth again. I'm just going to wipe it off, keep it all nice and clear. This gets any sort of grease that potentially has gone on it. Just give it a really good wipe around the edge like so. And then you can see that's nice and clear. We've got a bit of damage in here. That's just where the nozzle's probably scratched away on the cleaning part. You can get that off with a bit of effort like so. And I feel a bit of um, stickiness on the side there. And then what I like to do, a lot of people just use it as it is. I just like to give it a quick spray of 3D lac, which I'll do off screen, like so. And that sort of creates like a seal. And on these K1s, you've got like little nodules at the back. Just drop it in place and there you go. Nice and clean for the next time round. So um, that's the K1 Creality maintenance um it's very basic it's not too difficult but it's very important to do over time so thank you for watching and don't forget to like and subscribe